Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I'm Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Yeah, it was it was a little longer between <laughs> episodes than we had intended. Yeah, I've been I've been sick. I'm I'm not quite a hundred percent, but I'm I'm close. Getting there. You sound yeah. a lot better than the last than the when we spoke last Thursday yeah. when I called you. Yeah, you were. Did not sound like you were down to do much of anything. <laughs> I was pretty miserable, I, I'll admit. So, uh, in in honor of this achievement of getting better, yeah, uh, we're we're drinking some cognac. Some very good cognac, I would yeah. like to say. Except yes. that you added ice to it. I uh, did. Again, I don't. I don't get the ice. Yeah, I had some people come like by ice. today to check out my air conditioner because yeah. you know it's not it's not at a hundred percent either. <laughs> um, yeah. And. Uh, there was a, a comment made about my liquor cabinet, and because um, I, you know, one of the guys I know, so uh, I I showed off my liquor cabinet as and, always. Because um, he's a he's a person who appreciates good bourbon. Yeah. So um, I, I showed off my liquor cabinet, and then when he was back here today, uh, the bringing in the guy that's going to actually do the work probably. Um, he's saying, uh, "Oh yeah," and he's uh, he's got a well stocked liquor cabinet too, so he can. You know, he can keep you going. And the guy was like, well, I don't, I don't know. It would probably do more harm than good. <laughs> you know, yeah, kinda. right. <laughs> but uh, he said, uh, he's got good liquor, though, too. He's like, oh, the kind that you, you don't put ice in. <laughs> I said, well, yeah, that's true. Unless you're Liberty Larry. Unless you're me, because I like my ice. Yeah. Just killing the flavor, man. It, so, some would argue that it brings the flavor out. That it enhances the flavor. Yeah, those people would be lying. Wow. <laughs> Much like, ah. like this transition. <laughs> like the transition. <laughs> Much like Mike Pompeo. Ah. So we should start a segment called the War of the Week. Or something. <laughs> or something. Do a regular segment here. Um, although it's been the same war for a while, it's I guess, the, now. Yeah, a couple of weeks. We, we've been on Iran. Iran, Iran, Iran. Iran, Iran. Yeah. Well, we started with Venezuela when we started the podcast. Though. That's true. So they have moved on to a <laughs> yeah, different... Yeah, they gave up on that one. It wasn't yep. working like they expected. Yeah. Try something else. Here we are. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, so I watched... So a couple of weeks ago now, there was uh, some ex- attacks on a couple of oil tankers moving through the Straits of Hormuz. Yep. And um, they were those attacks were immediately blamed on Iran. Uh, yeah. Before any evidence could be collected or anything like that, it was it's clear. Ama- it's amazing how they knew so quickly. Yes. Um, it was clear that Iran had done it. And I watched it. It was only like a four-minute um, press briefing that Mike Pompeo gave afterwards. And and it was just it was lies. It was all lies. <laughs> all the whole thing was lies. It was kind of impressive, actually. Like, it's amazing <laughs> to me that people can stand up in front of a crowd of people who have access to the Internet. Right. Um, And just like say these things that are clearly and demonstrably untrue. Yeah. Um, But it, you know, he claimed Iran was responsible for the attacks and this is why we know it. And then he proceeded to give no evidence whatsoever. Yeah. And um, he he listed three, four things. Depends on how you count. He listed them as four things. I think two of them were the same thing. That are still nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, zero plus zero adds up to. Yeah. So um, anyway, it, so he says intelligence and the weapons used. Of course, they claim that there there were these mines that were used. And I was going to say the report I saw said that the the they use these mines that are known to be used by the Iranians, mm-hmm. but it, like I, that just doesn't jive to me. I mean, it, how can you say? without question that they're the ones who used these mines that are by all I could tell by the evidence they gave on on the news they were just mines I well mean, even that's in question as far as I'm concerned really like you saw the pictures right yeah I did yeah okay so the the damage was six eight feet above Something. the water line yeah right mines explode at the waterline or below the waterline. The purpose of a mine is to sink a ship. It doesn't put holes above the waterline. It puts holes at or below the waterline. In fact, most mines actually hang their suspended underneath the water. Okay. First off, so you can't see them. Secondly, so that when they explode, 
They do so under the water. They do damage under the water, so the ship, ship immediately will take on starts water. taking on water. Yeah. Right. Um, besides the fact that the the Japanese crew said that that they were hit by a projectile. Yeah. Well, that was the other thing. I heard a lot of reports that were conflicting with what what with the whole there was a mine incident, and they were basically on the news. The stuff I watched, they were just like writing that off, like. Oh yeah, it was, that, ignore that. Yeah, we've got an agenda that's, here. That's very inconvenient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Shh, shh. Right. Hey guys. Yeah. Quiet. Quiet with the projector. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um. So yeah, intelligence and weapons used was point number one. Yeah. And as far as I can tell, the weapons they're claiming that were used are very unlikely to have been the weapons used. Yeah. So point number one. Even, strike. And even if they were. I mean, how can you say for certain that those were Iranian mines? I mean, that's yeah, not like they got serial numbers on them. <laughs> yeah. It, point number two was even more, like, totally subjective and amorphous, right? It said, the expertise required to launch these attacks. Ah, yes. To launch these attacks? Are you kidding me? Like, you know... What they're claiming was done essentially was that somebody taped a mine to the side of the boat. Like, is that does that require a lot of expertise? Really, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'm I'm not sure, but whatever. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll take that. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll give that one to them for now. Yeah. Um, point number three was the recent attacks on shipping from a, from May when they had the four tankers that were attacked in Saudi Arabia. Okay, right, and you remember that yeah. incident, and they. You know, immediately Iran did it, Iran did it, Iran did it. Yeah. Now, I just want to draw attention to the fact that there's never been any evidence presented on that one either <laughs> that Iran did it. So yeah. to claim that it's consistent with other things that they've done that we haven't managed to show you any evidence that they've done, and that's our evidence that they did this one, yeah. it's a bit circular. It's a little flaky. It it begs the question in the, the traditional sense, right? Like, <laughs> yes. And... Point number four was that the resources and proficiency necessary for such sophisticated attacks, <laughs> which is the same as point number two as far as I can tell. I, I don't see the difference between them. And so I, I still have questions, but, yeah. you know, I'm not a military expert, so I, I can't Fair say, say yeah. for sure. But those were the things, essentially, that they'd done this before yeah. without evidence yeah. um, and uh, that... It was difficult. Yeah, yeah. Although it doesn't seem to have been. Yeah, can't imagine how difficult it would have been. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the the reason that we're, you know, moving closer to war. And then of course yeah. there was the drone. Well, I was gonna say we had the drone attack. Um, was I guess this was last week, mm -hmm. um, in which um, Trump initially was gonna bomb three sites in Iran, and then ten minutes before. They were fixing to do the job. He called it off, mm -hmm. which I, I have to say I find admirable. I mean, I'm, I'm glad he did. And not just for the fact that he did that, but what it's kind of done to the media since he's done that. Because it, it seems to me that's at least brought it out that, you know, okay, they, they shot down one of our spy planes. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, killing 150 people in response to that is not proportionate. It's it's just not. And yeah. had he had carried that that out, I think that the media would have just bought right into it and been like, like you. So you would have heard from us and some mm -hmm. other the more libertarian minded people and the anti war people in general. Yeah, on the that, left and right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That this this is not proportionate, but like it's really kind of been put out in front of everybody that that it's not okay to go kill a bunch of people over your damaged spy equipment. Yeah. Well, and I, I just think the whole idea that, you know, that this was the way it was spun almost immediately is this unprovoked attack on our unmanned drone over their territories yeah. <laughs> spying on them. Yeah. Their, their unprovoked oh, attack on our <laughs> spy drone in their territory. Yeah. And, and everybody parsing hairs over, well, was it over? Was it? A mile over, or was it a mile under? It doesn't really yeah, matter. Is that, I, I mean, don't it, think it's it, relevant. It's not relevant at all. But the whole—I mean, we've got the question those, of who's the aggressor here is not in question. Yeah, it seems it's to us. me. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we've got these things flying everywhere, all yeah. around their country, and just 
How think, dare they defend their sovereign territory? Well, exactly. And all I would ask people is, what if you put the shoe on the other foot? Yeah. What if Iran had had unmanned spy planes all over the coast of the U.S. within range of, you know, or within the, the requirements, whatever they are, however yeah. many miles off? If they'd done that, do you think we would not be a little upset about that? Yeah. And How long do you think their drones would last? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And and if we did shoot one down and then they bombed and killed 150 of our people, mm-hmm. then how do you think we would respond to that? Well, we, would, uh, we wouldn't consider that proportionate. No, no, definitely not. Um, oh, no, I won't go there. <laughs> I, uh, I actually, the next thing I saw, and it, it took me a while to find details, but the next thing I saw is that instead of the the attacks that might kill 150 people, yeah. um, that we were going to increase sanctions. Yeah. And, I think we did that. Well, we did do that. It started yeah. today, actually. Yeah. Um, as it turns out, the sanctions were focused. Now, I don't know, and I don't have like complete details, but the sanctions are focused on the Ayatollah and um, the you know high-ranking officials in the Revolutionary Guard Corps. Yeah. So, they're, they're personal sanctions. Yeah. I'm not entirely. I, I think it's like restricting access to money and transfers of money. We kind of use the U.S. kind of uses the SWIFT system. Okay. Uh, of money transfers, the like this worldwide clearinghouse thing that does money transfers between banks and and so forth. Yeah. They the U.S. kind of uses the SWIFT system as a weapon, which I think is is really really messed up. Yeah. Um. But you know, I, I to me sanctions are an act of war anyway. Yeah. But when I first heard it, I thought we we're doing more economic sanctions, like general economic sanctions, like we've been pressing on them for a long time. Well, since we dropped out of the nuclear deal. Yeah. Um. And uh, and I thought, does Trump not realize that those kind of sanctions kill way more than 150 people when you have you know children starving <laughs> and diseased and so forth yeah. because they can't access anything. And I don't know if we've discussed this on the podcast or not, but the whole idea of using sanctions as a weapon against another government is kind of insane because you're not actually punishing the government when you do that. You're punishing the people. Yeah. Which the whole idea would be is, well, we'll punish the people and then the people will rise up against the government. Mm Mm-hmm. But if they know the people know that we're putting the sanctions on them, they're not going to exactly view us as friendly in this department yeah, you can very easily as that government you can call it propaganda if you want but you can very easily as that the the subject government yeah. say you guys would be fine if it weren't for those americans that have restricted you know all food imports and so yeah. forth and that's something that it does by the way i think it's yeah. like i th- i actually think that it's a like a terrible ruthless humanitarian thing yeah. to cut off trade with everybody yeah um, which, I mean, the sanctions in this case that we have on Iran are pretty close to that. Like, yeah. we, we've reduced their uh, oil exports by like two-thirds. Yeah. By the way, one of their trading partners, yeah. their, their remaining trading partners, is Japan. Yeah. And, which is and, why this doesn't make a whole lot of sense when you start putting it together. Yeah, and, and Abe was there meeting with the Ayatollah at the time that this attack occurred. Like, yeah. it just doesn't make any sense at all. Talk about shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah, like um, of, all, of all the tankers that they, were to, they would want to attack, it just doesn't seem like that would have been one of them. Yeah, so to me, there's, a, there's several more likely perpetrators of the tanker attacks than Iran yeah. in this case. Now, with the purpose of getting Iran... Like embroiled in a war with the U.S. Yeah, or the U.S. embroiled in a war with Iran. However, you know whatever perspective you take. Yeah. Um. But I think I, I can say in my mind with relative certainty that Iran did not commit these acts. Doesn't seem that way. Yeah, it seems that way to me. And so, um, I also saw in the news last week that the uh, Mohammed Morsi. Uh, who had been president of Egypt for a short time. Yeah. Uh, he died in court. Oh, really? Um, yeah, he like fainted and, and never regained consciousness or oh, something wow. like um, in, and the, there's, in the courtroom? In the courtroom. Really? Um, there's, there's questions, and it was like, uh, what were they holding him for? Espionage or something? I, I can't recall exactly, but um, this is the guy who, uh, after the Arab Spring, which... You know, it may be conspiracy theory to claim that the U.S. intelligence 
was responsible for the Arab Spring uprisings all over. Like you had the color coded yeah. revolutions and all that stuff. Anyway, yeah. um, I, I don't think I don't think that's really in question either, honestly. But yeah. so the Arab Spring uprising in Egypt that overthrew our former ally uh, Mubarak, who wasn't playing ball anymore, yeah. and then. Whoa! Suddenly, <coughs> there's a, a revolution in this country that succeeds. <laughs> um, he, uh, when he was was removed from office, they had democratic elections in Egypt. This guy Mohammed Morsi won. Yeah, but the U.S. was, was really <laughs> unhappy about that because he represented the Muslim Brotherhood. He was the mother Muslim Brotherhood guy. Yeah, right. I remember that. And yeah. then there was another uprising. <laughs> Imagine that. And yeah, out he came. So I like. When that came up, oh, that was mine. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. And you're always getting on to me. I know, I know. I usually don't even have it's the volume. It's because yours on. don't normally ring, right? Yeah. Well, I usually <laughs> have the volume off and I forgot. Um, it's fixed now. <laughs> As is mine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so anyway, it got me thinking, like, I think what people need to know, and I'm not sure that this is this is wide knowledge. Yeah. I could be wrong. So stop me if you've heard this one. Actually, I know you've heard this one. But, <laughs> Probably. Um uh, so I was thinking about why why is it that there's this problem between Iran and the U.S.? Why would Iran look at the U.S. as an enemy, like beyond all the sanctions and yeah. unilaterally pulling out of deal that they were adhering to? Well, and basically all, that stuff? all the mess that's going on currently. Yeah, like there has to be a history there, right? And, and it's been a history. I mean, as far as like America knows, that you know Iran has been. Uh, a terrible evil and a blight upon the world since 1979 when they overran our embassy. Yeah. Right. But what you don't hear about is what happened before then. Okay. Okay. So um, I, I just thought I would do like a kind relatively a yeah quick recap of the U.S. interference in um, Iranian politics since yeah. since after World War Two. Okay. So um, while Iran wasn't actually a part of World War Two. Some allied powers, the the British and the Russians, um, both occupied territory in Iran okay. uh, for oil resources yeah. um, during the war. And uh, after the war, um, well, sometime after the war, there was like some movements back and forth. That you had a Shah, the Shah in power in Iran. Uh, it was kind of uneasy because he's terrible, yeah. like he he's like brutal yeah. and what have you. And um, he was he was forced out. Uh, by a popular uprising in the 1950s. And they had uh, a new uh, democratically elected yeah. um, uh, president, I guess you'd call it. I don't think, I don't know that that's, that's the word, not the they, word they use. That's not the word they use, but yeah. uh, anyway. Head of state. Yeah, head of state, uh, who was uh, Mohammad Mossadegh. Okay. Um, now, Mohammad Mossadegh, when he took power in 1953, he uh, convinced the Iranian parliament or their analogous structure um, to nationalize the oil in okay. Iran. So yeah. they nationalized Iranian oil, which was controlled mostly by Western powers, mostly by Britain, actually. Yeah. Um, so the the British had their what they considered to be their assets, the natural resources in Iran seized. I'm not sure if there was any payment of any kind. I yeah. suspect that there was. I'm sure actually, there was. Yeah, but I don't know that, so I can't. Yeah. I can't, can't say. Speak to it. So in response. Um, the CIA, along with British intelligence, organized a coup uh, to overthrow Mohammad Mossadegh. Yeah. Um, and they install, reinstalled, I guess I should mm. say, uh, the Shah. So the Shah was a ruthless dictator, as, as said before, yeah. um, and controlled the country uh, until 1978. And okay. like it, we, we weren't exactly you know, supporting democracy in this case. Like we, yeah. <laughs> we overthrew a democratically elected government. And we installed a, a dictator who was terrible to the people. Yeah. Um, and uh, so eventually, though, the Iranians were able to overthrow, overthrow the Shah in 1978. Okay. Okay. So there was a, he, he ruled into, until this coup in 1978, and he fled the country. Um, and, uh, and they, they brought uh, Ayatollah Khomeini in, the, the original Ayatollah. He was yeah. like the spiritual leader, essentially in Iran. Um, I mean, and he was he was certainly a uh, um, an Islamic, not radical exactly, but like yeah. I said, he's a spiritual leader. He's yeah. like it's like putting the 
the Sharia, Pope in charge. Sharia, Sharia law was in effect. Yeah, well, it's like putting the Pope in charge. Yeah. Right? So, um, but anyway, that was the popular will of the people. That's what the people wanted, yeah. Was to put the Ayatollah in, in charge. Yeah. And um, the Shah fled the country, and the Ir- Iranians um, said that they wanted him returned to stand trial for the crimes that he committed as, as leader of the country. Yeah. And the U.S. refused, and the U.S. even admitted him um, into the U.S. to seek medical treatment because he was in really? poor health at that point. Yeah. Um, so they admitted him to the U.S. to to, uh, to seek medical treatment, and yeah. that was in October of 1979. Okay. And that's when things went crazy because yeah. after we let him in to the country to seek medical treatment, after refusing to return him to Iran to stand trial, that's when they overran the embassy uh-huh. at the beginning of November. Um, in 1970, uh, 1979. So it was yeah. October 79 that he came into the country here. Yeah. And then November of 1979, later, yeah. it was only a few weeks, few actually. Weeks, yeah. It was like mid-October that he came in. It was early November when they overran the embassy. Gotcha. But the point is that they, they didn't overrun the embassy when we refused to return him, yeah. even. They didn't overrun the embassy until we not only refused to return him, but allowed him into our country to seek medical treatment to like save his life. <laughs> yeah. Like beyond. So yeah. anyway, then they overran the embassy and that's when we first start hearing that's about when. Iran. But wait, there's more. <laughs> right. So then in the 1980s, uh, Iraq and Iran um, entered a war with each other. I- Iraq invaded Iran. Oh. And at that time, we supported our good buddy Saddam Hussein. Yeah, at that time, <laughs> we were still buddies. Yeah. Um, that who, before that fell through. Yeah, who invaded Iran. And we openly supported Saddam Hussein's invasion of yeah. Iran. Um, and during that time, while we didn't actually declare war, uh, we um, provided naval support. Like, Didn't we give actually, a bunch of weapons and whatnot? Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. We sold weapons. to, But we sold weapons to both sides. That's another part of the story, <laughs> right? Oh, okay. So, we, yeah, we gave... Um, we gave Iraq, Saddam Hussein in Iraq a bunch of weapons, but then we also sold weapons to Iran through uh, Israel as a proxy. Oh. Um, and we used the funds that we earned. This is in the mid-80s now. Yeah. We used the funds that we earned from those arms sales to support the Contras in, um, in uh, where was it? Um, Honduras, Guatemala, Nicaragua. Ah. Um, Yes, Nicaraguan Contras, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and this became known as the Iran Contra right. affair. Ah, you, you, okay. might, you might know of. Yes. Um, so, yeah, and the Contras were no angels, by the way, either. They yeah. committed like numerous human vi- rights violations and terrorism. In fact, we would call them terrorists, except that we supported them. So they're freedom. So fighters. they're freedom fighters. Right. Amazing how that term gets <laughs> yeah. tossed around. Exactly. So, um, so we sold arms to both sides. And uh, but also we were waging a, a naval war with Iran during that time. It wasn't yeah. declared, but uh, we sunk a whole bunch of the Iranian Navy. Like our yeah. Navy sunk a bunch of the Iranian Navy. Yeah. Um, and then to, to cap it all off in the end and our mistakes in this, um, the U.S. Navy uh, shot down an Iranian passenger airplane ah. over Iranian airspace. Oh, wow. Yeah. So think about that one if it was on the other foot. Yeah, right? imagine putting that shoe on the other foot. Um, so that that's uh, that's more or less our history with Iran. Uh, except that then we have we get into the two thousands after nine eleven. I was gonna say yeah, you're leaving out because <laughs> they they were like well I remember because Bush came out with the whole access of evil, mm-hmm. um, and I remember Iran was on that. They were they were part of the access of evil. Yeah, well. So, even though is, they had nothing to do with nine eleven, yeah, exactly. They and were they is, were not part of that. This <laughs> is an important point, actually, and this is one of those things where they, the both the government and the media take advantage. Actually, I, sometimes I wonder if the media is just as ignorant as the rest of us. But it could be um, where they take advantage of how the the typical American doesn't know anything about the politics over there, yeah. uh, any of these various groups, because Al Qaeda. Um, who was responsible for the 9-11 attacks, is a Sunni radical jihadist group. Yeah. Um, and in fact, the, like we know, even though they tried to cover it up, we know that the people actually involved in 9-11 were mostly Saudis and Egyptians, yeah. who, as I've mentioned before on this podcast, are our allies over there. <laughs> exactly. Right? 
even though they are responsible for the 9-11 attacks. Yeah. Um, so we, we used it as an excuse to overthrow the Sunni government in Iraq um, by conflating al-Qaeda with the Taliban. And um, it's like conflating... They're not the same thing. Yeah, yeah. it's like conflating the, the mayor of New York with the mafia boss. Yeah. I mean, right. it's, yeah. that's kind of the difference between... The, like, Taliban is a real government structure... Yeah. Um, the Al Qaeda is a group of of misfits yeah. that work outside the law. Freedom fighters. Freedom fighters. <laughs> Wait, no, <laughs> terrorists because they're not on Terror- our side. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Terrorists oh, I got. Yeah, yeah, you're right. My, you, my bad. I always yeah. get that confused, uh, man. <laughs> a lot of a lot of people do. <laughs> um, so Ugh. then we fought this war in Iraq, toppled the Sunni government of Saddam Hussein. Mm-hmm. Now know that at the Time, and it's actually still true, so I don't know why I'm saying at the time. Right. But um, the the Shia ma- was a majority in Iraq, is a majority in Iraq. Yeah. Um, but the Sunni controlled the government. It was like 60-40 Shia Sunni. Um, so you had a, a, a Shia majority, plurality even, yeah. um, and a Sunni controlled government with Saddam Hussein. So then we overthrow the Sunni government. Yeah. And lo and behold, the Shia take over Iraq. Right? Imagine that. Right? They were a majority. They didn't have any power in the government. Yeah. Now that government's over, been overthrown, so the majority takes control. I would like to say, when all this was going on, there were voices out here saying that that's what was going to happen. Because I remember yeah. um, the people who didn't support the war, were th- they were those voices saying, look, when, when Saddam falls, we don't really have a lot of control over what happens after that. And mm-hmm. and it, we don't know who's going to take over because there's these different factions, yeah. and and one of them is going to control things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So and they're not all our friends. <laughs> yeah. And Ir- Iran is a, a primarily Shia nation. Yeah. Right? Um. So then, so we we fight this war essentially for Iran in yeah. Iraq. Yeah. Right? We overthrow the the Iranians' in, in, enemies in Iraq, yeah. and then the Iranians' friends take over the government. Yeah. Somewhere in the mid two thousands, somebody is like, "Uh oh, no oh snap! <laughs> we messed this up." Yeah, and then they started the the redirection under George Bush. As, yeah, I mean, as I understand, that's what they call it. That's what I keep hearing. The term that I hear used yeah. over and over again. I don't know if it's official or not, but the redirection. Yeah. Um, and the redirection was, "Ooh, we just fought this war for Iran in Iraq." And we didn't mean to do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, we don't want the Iranians to have more power. We want the Iranians to have less power. Yeah. Well, we can't go straight back into Iraq and fight the same civil war, but on the other side. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so we'll have to we'll have to fight against. And we, we don't want to go straight into Iran because yeah. that's going to well, be way worse than Iraq. That's that's going to be a war. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's when we started. You know poking Syria. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we we went to war in Syria fighting on the other side. <laughs> so fighting with the Sunni jihadists yeah. who attacked America against the Shia government of Syria. Yeah. Right. And we're doing the same thing in Yemen, by the way. <laughs> and by the way, for the listeners, <laughs> if this sounds like a mess, it freaking is, man. Yeah. Like the, a lot of this could be dealt with by just pulling back. Yeah. And, just, just just get out of the way. We, get out of the way because we're not going to win this. Like, there's not a winnable. If, if this tells you doesn't tell you anything, it's that there's not a winnable situation here. I mean, there's really not an outcome that that's going to favor us one way or the other. I mean, it, once one side, once the one side we're supporting wins, we're just going to go to the other side again. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, there's no reason for us to be involved here. Yeah, I mean, which is what happened with Osama bin Laden in Afghanistan. Yeah. We were supporting the Afghanis. I mean, he wasn't actually Afghani, but um, we were supporting we were the, supporting the jihadists in yeah. Afghanistan to fight off the Russians, to fight yeah. off the Soviets. Yeah. And then when they successfully pushed the Soviets out of Afghanistan, then they started trying to push the Americans out of yeah. Afghanistan. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because it was their country. Because it's so not they, our country. Yeah. yeah. So they accepted our help. When the bigger threat was the Soviets, yeah. and when they got rid of the Soviets, then we became the biggest threat. Exactly. 
And, and if we, we didn't had leave. Just, if we had just packed up and left, it would have all been fine. Exactly. Which is what, I mean, not that we really should have been there in the first place then. Also true. But <laughs> given, given you the Russians and then just us backing out, we would have been, it wouldn't have been fine. Yeah. So, you know, now we're, we're fighting on different sides of the, we're fighting, <laughs> we're actually currently still. Yeah. Fighting with the Sunnis. Sunnis are our allies fighting. No, sorry. I have that backwards. Okay. Well, I started in the wrong place. All I right. could have I could have actually played that off like I didn't make a mistake. <laughs> but see, this is confusing even for me, and I've it's, been reading this stuff for years. You've been studying this stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're fighting with the Shia huh. against the Sunnis in Iraq. Yeah. And if you just cross the border between Iraq and Syria, huh. we're fighting with the Sunnis against the Shia. Huh. I mean, there's like, stories literally of, of freedom fighters. Yeah. Um, Fighting and taking weapons from the Americans in Syria, yeah. and then taking those weapons, crossing the border to become terrorists to fight against the, the United Americans. States. Yeah, so our own weapons being used against. Us. Yeah. yeah, that was something I was going to comment on earlier when you were yeah. talking about uh, the weapons used and how you know, like, how can you know that they're specifically like they're not the only nation using these weapons? Yeah. Three quarters of the Middle East is using American weapons. Yeah. I mean, it's not like we haven't <laughs> because even when we leave somewhere, we leave half that stuff there anyway. Yeah, because we it costs more to transport than it does to produce it. In a lot of situations. I don't know that that's even true. I just think that they use it as an excuse to pay their buddies in the military industrial complex to make more. Yeah, well, that's probably true, too. <laughs> probably so, not, that may be true. So that's the that's the quick rundown in here, is that um, we have uh, overthrown their government because they took control of their own resources, installed a brutal dictator. Um, then we, instead of returning that brutal dictator when he was overthrown so that he could stand trial in his country for the crimes that he committed when he was our puppet dictator, um, we refused to return him and then offered him medical treatment and asylum in our country. And then they over, overran our embassy. They did eventually return the people, yeah. by the way. Under um, Reagan. Yeah. yeah well, we, <laughs> that's, a, that's another podcast. Um, Fair enough. So uh, then we supported their enemies that invaded them yeah. in the Iran-Iraq war. Uh, but we sold them weapons. <laughs> that was nice of us. Uh, well, yeah. yeah. You know. That was nice of us. Um, but then we blew up their navy and shot down a passenger airliner. <laughs> um, and then we uh, overthrew the Iraqi government in their favor. Yeah. And then we attacked their buddy in Syria. And we've been trying to make up for our mistake in Iraq ever since. There you go. There's also the claim that they are um, su supporters, that they support the Houthis in Yemen. Ah. This yeah. is another point probably worth addressing. That, yeah. um, and I'm, I'm not going to spend much time on it. I just want to point out that they are supporters in the sense that they agree with what the Houthis are doing. Yeah. They're not direct supporters. They're not providing weapons. They're not providing fun. I mean, they may be providing some funding, but it's yeah. marginal. It's not a lot. It's not a lot. They're, yeah. they're not... It's not a proxy for the Iranians in Yemen. Yeah. Um, the Houthis are... That's just who they would want to yeah, win. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, but there's, only because there's no... The, only because they want to push back the, the Sunnis, mm. right? Again. Um, and yeah. in fact, the, the Houthis aren't Shia either. They're um, Hazidi or something. It's another sect of, another of Islam brand, yeah. um, that aren't exactly buddies with the Shia, but they're closer to the Shia than the Sunnis are. <laughs> yeah, they agree um, on more than they disagree. Yeah, and, it, you know, it's mostly it's mostly really about Saudi Arabia. The, those yeah. are now the two big, big powers in the Middle East that are vying for control. you got yeah. the Shia Iran and the Sunni um, Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Insanity, so, man. It, it really is. Yeah, so uh, that's, the, that's the rundown. Just know... Just know that we've been involved way longer than oh, since yeah. they overran the embassy. Yeah. There's, there's a reason. There's a history there. <laughs> yes. Um, so. And now we're just, we're just hunting for a war. Yeah, I mean, that's real. Well, and you've got, you've got a bunch of hawks in the administration. I mean, you've got Bolton there. You've got Pompeo there. And, I mean, that, these guys want that. Mm -hmm. Um. And they're they're not going to stop till they get man. Just wish I could have seen their reaction when when Trump pulled back from the the response. 
Yeah. Oh, I would have loved to. I, I just want a picture of Bolton's um, mustachioed face. <laughs> oh. Yeah, well. Oh. So, um, we had another topic. We do. For today. I don't have a really easy way to segue from that into mm. the other thing. Uh, so, we go from abroad to home. Yeah. Let's talk about some domestic issues. Yeah. Um, so go ahead and fill us in. You um, sent me the, the article Yeah, I sent you the link. Um, so the Supreme Court ruled, um, I guess it was, was that earlier this week, I think? No, today's Monday. Today's Monday. Oh, last <laughs> week. I forget. We Yeah, it would have been there when we no originally was going to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, it depends on when you draw your weeks. But anyway. Oh, sure. <laughs> um, yeah, they ruled that um, basically. We go Wednesday to Tuesday here. <laughs> Hey, well, the company I work for, we go Saturday to Friday, so I'm just saying. It's, it's all where you draw the lines. <laughs> so, but anyway, yeah, so the Supreme Court ruled that, um, I guess, basically, in so many words, double jeopardy isn't a thing anymore. That if, if, you, get, if you get tried in state, in your state, for a crime, and you're not convicted, the federal government can basically try you for the same crime again. And actually, as I understood it, they can try you for the same crime again, even if you are convicted. Yeah, well, actually, the case the, the case that, that took it to the Supreme Court, well, the, the concern is, is that you can be tried once, not get the right, they not get the right verdict, and then tried again. But the case that was actually brought to the Supreme Court, that's exactly what happened. They got the conviction the first time, and then convicting him again, on the same crime, a second time, um, in, in state and federal, which the, the idea being that, uh, that different types of government can charge you with the same crime. And it's, it's pretty clear that's, that's a clear violation of double jeopardy. I mean, that's like Seems to me. in, in, in everything I've read, not just in this country, but even in other countries where they have the same type of laws that you don't want the same type of rules that you don't want to be tried multiple times for the same crime this seems to be a pretty standard thing that just because a different branch of the government wants to try you they can't once you've been exonerated you should be exonerated or convicted for that matter i mean if if the state will, if the the federal government wanted to take their swing at you they should have took it ahead of the state government i mean you should only be tried one time yeah, absolutely. I was trying to look up um, really quickly. I'm sorry, that was kind of quiet because I was turned away. Yeah, you're not the facing microphone. the mic, and we can't um, see the little lines. In the <laughs> yeah, I was trying to find real quick the, the actual text of the Fifth Amendment. I, yeah, you probably have it I was going to say, right? yeah, um, I can I just wanted I can, to read it. Uh, I can pull quick. that the, up for you. I meant... Yeah, the Fifth Amendment is the relevant amendment here. Um, yeah. It essentially says that uh, you can't be um, tried twice for the same offense, and but it... it does it in a more eloquent way. <laughs> than yeah, I, I got did. it pulled up. Okay. Do you want to? Oh, yeah. Um, to... That's not it. That's the, 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 the amendment. Ah, uh, my bad. Five. Fat checking on the fly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Nor shall any person be subject for the same offense to be twice put in jeopardy of life or limb. Essentially, yeah. what they mean there is not just life, though. They're they're talking about property and, and yeah. so forth. and so anything else. Essentially, criminal. Yeah. Right. Um, so the the Supreme Court has ruled that you can be um, that you can have two different cases, like one civil, one criminal. Yeah. On the same. Well, that's and that's always like that. which I've always felt like that was a violation of double jeopardy too. But at least you're in the civil case, you're not actually facing. Time. Right, right. And it's it's kind of very different spheres in a lot of ways. I, I, I can almost get by. I can get by with that. I don't agree with it. Yeah. But I can get by with that. But the fact that you could actually have the federal government and the state government prosecute you for the same crime is, is just insanity. I mean, if you want to take it to the next level, I mean, why can't your city and county governments do the same? Well, I mean, they, I mean don't adri- they don't address that in, in this case. Mm-hmm. But... I mean, you've opened the door for that. Yeah. The claim that they're making here is that there's they're separate sovereignties. Yeah. And since they're separate sovereignties, they have different laws. So even if those different laws 
are substantially the same thing. <laughs> it, it's two different crimes because there's two different governmental bodies that are that which, are prosecuting. Which is just insanity. I don't know how to to say that. I, like I don't know. I mean, and what's what's really scary is so there was only two dissenting justices mm -hmm. for this. Yeah. Can you name them? I can. Uh, <laughs> RBG, yep. Ruth Bader Ginsburg, yep. and uh, Neil Gorsuch. Yep, that is correct. And to believe that, I mean, for Ginsburg to get it right, I mean, hey, you know, maybe she's figuring out something. I don't know. She's pretty far down the rabbit she's, hole, it seems to me. But She's generally on board with this kind of personal... Is she? I mean, I don't personal know. Personal protection. I mean, thing. I, all I kind of know is her yeah, other... No, the stuff I disagree with her yeah, on is no, the stuff I know more about. <laughs> she's definitely in on the civil liberties. Is like, she? she? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, absolutely. Well, I mean, um, even though... It just... It's it's sad to me. Well, that, it, it's it's a real danger, too. Um, yeah. Because the, the purpose of this... Uh, this has... Long roots, right? Like yeah. deep roots. Right? So um, it was part of English common law. Yeah. Um, and and actually, uh, Neil Gorsuch, I, I read his his dissenting opinion on this, or most of it. Like it was longer than I thought, I, and I started I heard later. a synopsis of it, and it sounds like it was extremely good. Like it sounds like it was long and good. Yeah, oh, it was good. I mean, what I read of it, like I said, I, I started late because I, I didn't get to this thing until... Yeah. Until later, and I, it was. I haven't got I to do as much back research as I wanted to either, because I wanted to read it. Because from the the synopsis I heard of it, I mean, he goes back to like Roman times. Oh yeah, yeah. and well, then he cites he cites other work, how this is handled in other countries and yeah. how it was intended to be handled here. Yeah, like well, he really did his thing. he really did his research on it. Is that the purpose of this is to prevent governments from be being able to um, keep trying until they get the result that they want? Yeah. That that yeah. is a a, a severe um, imposition on personal liberty. Yeah, without and, question. Uh, yeah. So, and it's it's just incredibly dangerous for a government to have the power to keep running you through its own system until it gets what it wants out yeah. of it. Right. Uh, hopefully, that's apparent to everybody. I I, mean, I, I don't know how here's, to explain here, it better. Here's the other scary thing: is that I mean, it's got no coverage. Like, I mean, I happen to pick up this article that I sent to you. Yeah. But this isn't this isn't everywhere. Like, I mean, I've I've caught a, a small thing on the news one time about it, and that was it. And I watch a pretty good bit. Like, it's it's not really getting a lot of traction. Yeah. Um, now, something, some stuff that was interesting in Gorsuch's opinion. You're talking yeah. about him taking it way back and citing yeah. examples and so forth. Um, he he cited several examples from the late 18th century, like the very beginnings of this country, yeah. um, where uh, trial by both the federal and state governments was rejected by the courts. Yeah. Um, where they uh, and, and including military stuff. So really? um, if the you know somebody, I can't. Remember the specific examples that I just wrote down. That there were some specific examples. I didn't <laughs> and you didn't write, write them down. Examples down. Dang. Um, now, you know, I was trying to get through a lot, yeah. a little bit of time. So, yeah. Um, anyway, the you know they'd been tried in military court, and yeah. then um, the state tried to try them as well, and they're like, "No, nah, this is this isn't fair." Yeah. Or that they were tried in military court and then federal court, and they said, "No, you can't, you can't do this. This is a violation of double jeopardy." Um, and then he uh, he also commented on um, the when the uh, in the Constitutional Convention because yeah. there's extensive records. So any of those people that claim that you know we can't know exactly what the founders meant when they wrote various things, or um, that the you know that it's very flexible or that it's open to interpretation and so forth. Yeah. No, it's not yeah. because they wrote extensively on why they what chose they were what they doing chose. and why. Yeah. Yep. Um, so there's there's quite a bit of documentation on the Constitutional Convention yeah. of what they discussed, alternate versions of the things, why they chose what they chose to actually go in the Constitution. Yeah. It's all there. So it's, there's it's, reams and reams of information from all these people that participated in the writing of the Constitution about what they did and why. Yeah. Right. So nothing's open to interpretation. Yeah. They wrote down what they meant. Yeah. It's, they, they meant what they said. Yeah. yeah. And that's the other thing. Like anybody who reads that yeah. has got to be able to understand, yeah. you know, that like 
Uh, what Gorsuch said, actually, was something like, uh, imagine trying to explain to somebody how it is that they can be tried in their state court for a specific offense yeah. and that the, the federal court can also try them for the same offense, but it's not the same offense because the federal government is different from their state government. Like, yeah. try and explain that to that's, somebody, yeah. how that's, that's not a violation that's of in the jeopardy. That's in the system trying to fight this. Yeah. I mean, seriously. Yeah. So um, the other thing, though, that that he wrote is going back to the Continental Congress. Uh, he said that they that they had written they had a version of this yeah. um, that had verbiage that would have codified the sovereign specific interpretation that they're trying to use right now. That that was the majority opinion on this. Yeah. And that it was rejected. Yeah. For good reason. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so well, and and they cite. What what is it the term they use precedent or whatever past precedent, but in reality they that's only past precedent since what night eighteen seventy four or so something like that is yeah, what well, I was seeing. I mean we started immediately ignoring the Constitution like well right yeah after. <laughs> yeah but even still I mean if it's all about picking which side you want to go yeah on, you know? I. I have a problem with the idea that precedent of determines using precedent. Law. Yeah, no, I I do too. I think that's completely crazy. Why would I mean just because they got it wrong doesn't mean we have to get it wrong. Just I mean, because remember, the last court got it wrong, right? Exactly. Is, is I mean, what that's the road you go down. Precedent kept slavery. Yep. Pre, I mean, precedent has been. Yeah, courts have been wrong more than once. Yeah, and and will be again. I mean, you yeah. can't. So you have to be able to look is, at that, and I, I don't. Yeah, I agree. I don't think. I mean, you can use the arguments. I can see why yeah. you would look at the arguments from. The oh, fair enough. Absolutely. But the, the main thing is that court, the Supreme Court specifically, but courts generally, they offer opinions. The yeah. Supreme Court offers an opinion on on this. It's not a ruling. They're not like well, laying and, down the law. And that's what I was fixing to say is it's, there's a difference between rulings and opinions. And mm-hmm. these are all opinions. They're yeah. not. They're not rulings. Yeah, I mean it says yeah. it right there on there. I read Neil Gorsuch's dissenting opinion. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I read a little bit of the majority opinion, but I got irritated. <laughs> it didn't take long, did it? <laughs> no. uh, um, well, the, the whole idea that you could have this many justices just get it wrong so blatantly, yeah. get it wrong. I mean, anybody who looks at this, in any American that looks in this, has to see the same thing we see. I yeah. mean, I, I get that we, we're a little more involved in this stuff than most mm-hmm. people, but, I mean, you show this to just about anybody, they're going to have the same opinions we do. Yeah. I, I hope that's true. Um, what well, it does, I think it though, is, is it, it solidifies power at the federal level. Yeah. Um, they are able to, uh, if, if the state courts don't get the results they want, they can try again. Yeah. Um, and it also, in a way, allows them to overrule the states. Yeah. You see, so again, oh, if they don't get the result that they want, then they can bring it the to state federal can, court instead. Yeah, the, or the feds can get in. Yeah, I still think of the state um, as different. <laughs> and this is this is a point that I wanted to make. There's a couple of things here that I, I think should be important to people when they're they're thinking about this. Um, this government is of the people. Yeah. The states are sovereign. Sure, the federal government's sovereign. But the the sovereign part of the government is the individual. The individual is sovereign, and that's what makes that's what creates the those other governments. Yeah, um, it's the individual that's sovereign. the The Constitution itself is a compact between the state. It's a contract. Yeah. It's a contract that the states got together and agreed upon to uh, regulate their business between each other and with the outside. Yeah, right. So the purpose of the federal government really. Um, it like it, it's directed at coordinating states' interaction with each other, yeah, and the states as a collective, their interaction with foreign governments. Hmm. That's the purpose of the federal government. That's their job. Yes, the federal government is not superior to the states. It was created by the states. Yeah. Right. Well, and that's that's how it was m- meant to be set up originally, but it's flipped now. Yeah. I mean, we we live in a world where that's not really the case anymore. Oh no, no. I mean, um, I mean the the at least as far as the opinions. I mean, even if you ask most people, they'll tell you, yeah, mm-hmm. the federal government absolutely supersedes the states, but it's not supposed to be that way. Mm-hmm. I mean, we we think that way because we've grown up 
in with that being how it's been. Yeah, and when the states di- tried to dissent really strongly in the 1860s, they yeah. well, went, well, went, well, yeah, we, <laughs> we, we went to war. Yeah, and and lost. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, and you know, maybe maybe that's a fair point. You know, I mean, maybe maybe this has been maybe that's part why, part of why we're where we're at now is because you know that that battle was fought and lost. It absolutely is. Um, I know I'm, I'm going to get emails that are <laughs> here we go about me supporting slavery or something, oh. which I absolutely reject. Yeah, well, completely. <laughs> but hey, that would be a pretty outlandish statement now, though. Supporting slavery. That's true. Like, I'd no, be a real rebel. You'd be a real rebel if you did, <laughs> because you're not. Yeah, but. The the claim of the states now there's problems with the the claim yeah. um, in terms of slavery specifically but the claim of the states that they have more control over their laws than the federal government does is absolutely correct should yeah. be should be um, yeah it was the states that got together that formed the federal government they entered into a contract with each other and when parties enter into a contract with each other they're able to leave the contract yeah under terms or whatever, but they're yeah. able to leave the contract. Talking and, about secession. Yeah. And when, what the Civil War said, what Lincoln said essentially, was that you don't have the option to leave this group. Yeah. You can't do that. And we will keep you in it forcibly. Yeah, exactly. And, and then we fought a war. And then we fought a war. <laughs> um, and it was a terrible war. It was and, a terrible now, war. In in terms of slavery specifically, which is obviously... Was one of the issues. Was one of the issues. Yeah. It absolutely was. Um, obviously, I don't approve of slavery. I think the individual no. is sovereign. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> right. it goes against everything we like, believe in. You can't, One man can't own another man. Yeah, exactly. You, uh, that man has rights just like you do. I yeah. mean, it's it's that's the way it is. That's um, what we believe. But in terms of the states being able to determine for themselves, I mean, it says this is another part of the Constitution, actually. Yeah. The Tenth Amendment. Tenth Amendment's a really important one. Go back and read that one. Yeah. It says essentially that anything, any power that hasn't been explicitly given to the federal government here in this in this contract yeah. belongs to the states and the people. Yeah, that's there you been go. completely ignored. Yeah, um, like and oh, while I'm here, and this seems like a convenient time, I will plug uh, Mike. I can't ever remember his last name um, that I met at the Libertarian. Uh, national convention. Oh, uh, I wasn't. Uh, okay. Yeah, I missed all that. Mike. Can't dang it. it. I can't remember his name. <laughs> anyway, um, check out the Tenth Amendment Center. Oh, okay. The, the I, I have Amendment heard of Center. that. Yeah. yeah the yeah. Tenth Amendment, spelled out T E N T H, Tenth Amendment Center dot com. Yeah. There's a lot of interesting articles talking there. about just this. And yeah, and it's it's about how the federal government has usurped the power of the states. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you'd you'd want your states to be the most powerful, more powerful than the government, because that brings your government closer to home, mm-hmm. which is one of our principles: is yeah. a, is bring the government closer to home, right? Um, and that's what you would want. People, we have and, it completely upside down here. We do, like, and this podcast, we believe in self government. Yeah, like absolutely. The, the the lowest levels of government should have the greatest the power. greatest amount of power, because it's it's you can leave those mm-hmm. if if you decide what they're doing in your state isn't right. You can go to another state. Vote mm-hmm. with your feet. Yeah. And I, I think the city governments should be stronger than the county governments. And the county governments should be stronger than the state governments. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, because would... because those people are responsible to the people, they, to the areas they're in. Mm-hmm. Um, and areas are different. Like cities are different across the country. I mean, you and I can yeah. find two cities that are the same. And the same thing with counties and, and you know, small and towns. Yeah. You know, the people of that town know what's best for their town. This is um this is a Heinlein quote. Uh and I'm not gonna get it exactly right. I may have used this one before, but um Robert Heinlein, sci fi writer, um, he said that it is a truism that any group, cult, or sect will legislate its beliefs into law if given the political power to do so. Yeah. Right. And um that is exactly what we're opposed to. Like, as libertarians, we don't believe in enforcing your beliefs on somebody else. Exactly. 
Exactly. I, I will tell you my beliefs over and over and oh, over yeah. again, and I will absolutely try to convince you that I'm right, you know, yeah. because I'm right. Because, yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> obviously, right? We're right about everything. <laughs> but um, I, I will never use force to make you follow what I believe. Exactly. Because it's not our place. And that, and, and just think about that in, in the broader terms of political parties in the United States. Yeah. Like, that is not the common opinion. No, it's absolutely not. So Absolutely come to the Libertarian not. Party. Join us. Yeah. <laughs> it sucks because you're not here. That's all I can say. <laughs> well, so, that seems like a convenient place to end unless you had something more to, to I, I think I think we pretty well hashed through everything I had in my notes. All right. Excellent. Well, um, as always, uh, follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on iTunes. Um, share and comment and like. and Please. All that other stuff. Get us out there. Uh, you can email me at michael at the liberty com. I like feedback. Uh, I've been getting more of it. I appreciate that. Absolutely. I thought about doing a little bit of a meta thing about um, some of the comments that I'd gotten about the last podcast. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, just the things that they were addressing is not at all what I thought was the important <laughs> things that we addressed. Yeah. I just found strange. We might come well, back to that. I, I find it interesting. Like, I'm kind of curious why that is. I have yeah. some ideas. But, well, um, and anybody that's listening, if you have suggestions for stuff you'd like to hear us talk about, definitely Yeah, bring and if you up. come across articles or something yeah. that, that you'd like us to, to take a look at. And, at some point, we'll know, start some... a Facebook group where you can do just that. Just like, it'd be a group of people that can all, we'll all kind of be under one community. Yeah, probably, six of you can pro- tell us pro- probably. exactly what you want. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. I won't be part of it because I don't really do Facebook. Yeah, um, it'll be fun. It's going to be great. Yeah, that, that'll, be, uh, that'll be Jerry's responsibility. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Appreciate that, buddy. <laughs> All right. Well, um, until next time, uh, try to stay free, and we will we'll get it right next time. All right. Train how you fight. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Ciao. Later.